I think we're moving too fast as, as uh, humans mm -hmm. uh, in our culture. We're I moving too. too fast. Children, as, as well as the adults, have lost contact with the earth medicine. Yes. Uh, they're breathing shallow. They're not looking into each other's eyes and, and being present. I mean, anywhere you go, it's almost considered rude to look someone in the eye and say good morning. And I know it still happens, but my experience has been uh, to look someone in the eye and it's like you're trying to give them a gift by acknowledging them and by using your voice you can actually slow them down and make contact, just human contact. It just feels like the train is moving 200 miles an hour with lots of stress and lots of fear of the future and so these cravings come into play to fill the void. So let's talk about cravings. Can, can, we, can we go back just a little bit? Yes. I want to rewind okay. just a little bit to that last question you asked me yes. and, and then yes I want to get to cravings because I, I have a lot to say about that. Okay. Um, you know when I was talking about life happening in a field? Yes. And I think in this field that our relationship with food tends to reflect how we're doing everything else. So if you mm -hmm. say to me, you're too busy to feed yourself right, I bet Good point. that also means that you're too busy to exercise, or you think you are, that you think you're too busy to have um, fun time, you think you're too, bu too busy to have downtime, you think you're too busy to sleep. Excellent point. It is, it is something that plays out across the board in the, the, the field of needs. And so I agree with you. I think Get off that, the train and mm -hmm. slow your life down. Right. And yeah. so this is, this is something that I think is critical. And, and before I left, the last question you had about um, why is there so much obesity, the third point that I want to make about that, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, um, a study out from France, and you can Google this. It's called Intense Sweetness Surpasses Cocaine Reward. Whoa. And what these French researchers proved is that sugar, in its white form, is more addictive than cocaine. Wow. More addictive than cocaine. So, when you see people saying, I want to stop eating this, but I can't, they're kind of right. Because if you, you know, if you were to yeah. replace sugar with cocaine, I mean, they're, they're basically telling you that they're hooked on something that has a complete hold on normal physiology. And it's going to make you want more, and then more, and then more, and it doesn't stop. It's a drug. And that's why in Weight Watchers, where they say, you know, one cookie is too much and a thousand isn't enough. Right? <laughs> right. It's true when it comes to sugar. Yeah. So this is, you know, there are mice studies too where they would, um, they've, we've discovered that sugar follows the opiate pathways in the brain. That if you give sugar water to baby mice, I'm sorry, if you take baby mice away from their moms, they cry a certain number of times per minute. If you feed those baby mice sugar water and you take them away from their mom, they don't cry. Wow. Also, they have studies showing that if you put mice, um, little mice feet on hot plates, they're going to pull them off because it's hot, right? Mm -hmm. If you give those same mice sugar water, it takes them twice as long to pull oh. their little feet off of the hot really? plates. So by this, they can deduce that sugar dulls physical pain. It also dulls emotional pain. So I am here to say I think that we're a nation of addicts. And, you know, this it's is... a different way of looking at it, but I think you're, you're telling a truth here. Because we all have some form uh, uh, of addiction, whether, you know, I'm not saying across the board, but 
if you asked a person walking down the street and you had a little survey, you would find that there's something going on to deal with the stress mm -hmm. that exists today in a society that's moving right. 200 miles an hour. Right. They've got it's it's a almost a, a struggle in their survival mechanism. So it's they're going yeah. to use something to sedate or something to comfort that has an immediate or, mm -hmm. comfort, right? Or somehow to mollify, somehow yes. to make it make it less painful that they're out of touch with themselves or in touch with their people and their tribes and their spirits and everything. Yeah. Well, let's get into the, the conversation on why people crave foods that are not good for them. But there are a lot of reasons why you could have cravings. There might be something very physiologically based. Yeah. For example, let's say you don't get enough sleep. Do you know that if you don't get enough sleep, you're going to produce about 20% less leptin in your body, which is a hormone. This hormone tells your body, I'm full and I'm satisfied. And if you um, don't have enough leptin, you're going to produce more ghrelin, which is the equal and opposite hormone that says, um, I'm hungry. So not enough sleep can cause cravings. Um, and not to mention that you're tired and you're just reaching for anything that's convenient, right? So, and other things that can happen are very metabolic. Like, for example, I mean, I just diagnosed my first case of hyperparathyroidism. Really? That'll cause a certain kind of cravings, not to feel well and to um, not have a lot of energy. And, you know, she said she, she was too tired to feed herself right. Anyway, um, you might have something metabolic otherwise, like you might have candida which is an overgrowth of fungus in the body. Everybody has a little fungus in them, but you could have too much. Yeah. And if you have too much, deciding what you're going to eat is like lobbying in Congress. The yeast are going to make you want sugar. So it's, it's hard to not eat sugar if you are um, fighting candida. It could be a parasite in your system. It could be, mm -hmm. um, it could be a nutrient deficiency. A lot of people are low in magnesium. And you know, magnesium is very high in chocolate. So it's, it's sort of medicinal to, to be um, feeding yourself chocolate if you're low in magnesium. Mm -hmm. It's not optimal, but you're, you're somehow you've got some body wisdom that says there's something in there for me. But um, you could also have low serotonin. You could have an imbalance in your neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. And if you have low serotonin, you're going to crave sugar to bring tryptophan across the blood-brain barrier to make more serotonin. So again, it's like body wisdom trying to medicate you, but it doesn't really get you there. No. And so for, for everybody, I say, you, you've got to get yourself tested. If, the, if cravings are a big issue for you, mm -hmm. you should get yourself tested to make sure. Is it, your, is it your cortisol is burned out? Do you have, are you low on DHEA? Um, if you're low on DHEA, you are going to be tired and achy and not wanting to cook. And, you know, it's, it's good to have the basic biochemistry in there to support right. running your machine. And then, then you're more able to take on the task of getting off a cocaine habit like sugar. <laughs> so the answer is, if you've got cravings, you need to go check it out. Because there you should may get yourself be something tested. there that's, that is abnormal. Yes. Okay. You know, I'm listening to you share these, this wonderful information. And what went through my mind was all these kids, especially in high school and in college, that are skipping meals, that don't have a, a healthy diet, mm -hmm. and how we need educators out there in the schools, in a program that's teaching what you're talking about. Because how are they going to learn it? It needs to be a course, yeah. a basic course. Remember we had home ec in mm -hmm. high school? Yeah. This, you know, 